Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of Convention Confessional. My name is Katie Hunt, and I'm here to guide you through the good, the bad, and the ugly of the convention world. I was off last week, one, because I just needed a break, two, because the universe tells you sometimes that you shouldn't record. <laughs> And it was, it hit hard last week. So I apologize for no episode last week, um, but that won't happen very often. It just, you know, life, life, this isn't a full-time job. Um, but also I've been thinking about episodes to record in the future. Um, and back when I first started doing this podcast, it was always with the intent of recording this particular episode someday when I was ready. Um, just because I, conventions, they aren't always great, (laughs) especially when working for one. It's hard. I mean, I've worked for several conventions over the years. Um, Some of them have been really amazing experiences. Some of them have started as really amazing experiences and then turned into not so great experiences. And unfortunately, this is one of those tales today. Um, October for me is, you know, like convention horror story month. Um, and I wouldn't say this is a complete horror story, but again, it's one of these episodes that I've pushed off, pushed off for all this time. And I haven't really talked about it, um, except for with my friends group. And I just feel like it's one of those cautionary tales for anybody, especially working in the convention world, just knowing what you're getting yourself into sometimes, Um, and it's also a story of just not letting yourself be used, (laughs) which I mean, it's happened to me a couple of times in convention life, not just at this particular convention, just in general, um, not letting yourself, you know, be used. (laughs) It's, it's sad. It doesn't make you feel good after, um, for all intents and purposes, I am not going to name the convention in this episode, um, and I am not going to use any names of anybody at this convention. Obviously, if you know me and you listen to the podcast, you're going to know exactly what I am talking about, um, and I respect that you will all just let it be. Um, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, then again, this is just a cautionary tale uh, for you listeners out there that you know, want to work conventions or already work at conventions of some kind. Um, just kind of look for the signs, I guess. And, uh, yeah. So, uh, back many, many, many years ago, um, before I was even working conventions, um, I was asked by some friends to go to a convention with them that was just starting up, um, as a, as a person going like an attendee, not as a person that worked at it. Cause I didn't, I didn't work conventions and I was going to help them with, uh, their masquerade stuff because I, you know, I loved costuming and it's funny now thinking back on it, like how old was I? I was only 20 ish, 20. I was going to be 21. I was only 20 because I was a few months out from being 21. So it's like, what the hell did I know? I've only been cosplaying for like two years. (laughs) I knew nothing in comparison as to what I know now, obviously, because this has been a million years ago. And I was like, yeah, I'll come help with a masquerade. Had I ever been in a masquerade before? No. (laughs) Had I ever competed? Absolutely not. No. So I'm like, well, yeah, I'll come help run one. (laughs) And I think back now, like, two people that I work with now, we've all done multiple either conventions, like one and or competed in multiple masquerades. It's like, I had no business working on masquerade HQ. I had no idea what I was doing, but I showed up and I looked pretty and that's what mattered. Now get to the convention and, um, tell that a rather large venue for a convention just starting out. But I mean, you get the venue that you can get and, um, it worked, it worked out really well. Um, the space was utilized quite well that first year, all things considered, Um, and I started off as just being a person that was there and I helped with the few things that I helped with. And then, um, I mean, it was a small con at the time, so they didn't have a lot of staff and they were scrambling a little bit, but I mean, that's all first cons just figuring themselves out. And I remember I was asked to like watch a t-shirt table 
for a few minutes by someone while they either went to the restroom or there was just nobody to watch it. So I sat there and I was selling t-shirts for this convention. I thought on like a volunteer kind of basis. Uh, and one of the staff members comes up to me and they go, are you a staff member? I was like, no. And I explained the situation to them that I was working with the masquerade people and I didn't have a staff badge, but I was there and I was willing to help with whatever I could help to make the event go off. And a few minutes later, they came back and threw a staff badge on the table and went, well, you're staff now, basically. And I was like, oh, okay. So that's how I became staff at the first convention I ever worked at. And yeah, the weekend went really well. Like I was helping with the masquerade people and they asked me like, oh, hey, do you want to help co-host the masquerade? I was like, co-host the masquerade. And I had like this PTSD flashback to when I was younger and I was asked to host a talent show at the rec center that I worked at. And I thought I was doing a really good job hosting it because all the kids were like, oh my God, this is so funny. You're so funny. Um, and the staff people came up and told me that um, I was not funny and that I shouldn't be hosting and somebody else was going to be taking over for me because I was doing such a craptastic job job and I was like okay so in the back of my mind I'm like great I am not good at this but I'll do it because my friends asked me and I will do the best that I can so get to the masquerade uh the guests of honor that year are the judges for it which is nice because that's how I ended up uh meeting a very good friend of mine um uh, uh Greg Finley uh, was a guest judge that year. Um, and we'll get back to that part of the story in a second, which we've already told on here a million years ago. We'll go back and listen to his episode at some point, talk about our first meeting. But yeah, like the masquerade went off and the lady that was the coordinator at the time, uh, she, uh, you know, <laughs> it fell through a little bit. I don't know if it was on her hand. I don't know if it was something that I did that, you know, upset her. Um, I know the crowd was very responsive to uh, my Tamaki cosplay and the fact that I was playing up the part of Tamaki from Oran High School Host Club. Uh, there was a shoe thrown at me <laughs> at one point and then she did not come back on stage and I completed the masquerade uh, and the crowd again seemed very responsive to it, but the whole time in the back of my mind, I'm thinking someone's going to come up and go, you need to get off stage because you have no idea what you're doing. And that wasn't the case, actually. Uh, what turned out to be a stint that I thought I was just helping my friends with turned into me being a full-time host in the following years for Masquerade. And that was exciting because I was like, oh my God, like I really am pretty decent at this and I love the energy in the room. And, you know, over the years of my hosting experience, it's like, that's the thing. I just like making other people happy and getting them engaged and ready to like watch these shows and these people compete. And it's honestly my favorite thing to do at a convention now. And later on, you know, the whole staff was so nice and they were like very kind and they were, you know, encouraging of me to like, you know, be a part of this group of people. Um, and like I said, Greg and I met up later on in the green room because now I had access to the green room now that I was staff. And um, he basically told me this is what I should be doing. Like I was meant to do this and that has resided with me for the rest of my hosting life. Is This is what I'm supposed to be doing. Um, so yeah, like that first year was great because, you know, we were just starting off. Nobody knew where they were. Uh, we all found our place kind of, and yeah, you know, you get that first taste of, you know, excitement and that first taste of like, like the energy of the room, you, you don't want to let that go. So of course I signed up, I was on staff and I would go to the meetings that they had, um, you know, because I wanted to be as involved as possible, especially being as young as I was. I was like, yeah, I want to be involved in this. I want to feel like important and do things and make convention experiences fun for everybody. So I made it a point to go to as many meetings as I could for the convention um, with my friends, especially because they were in charge of the masquerade for a few years. And the second year we weren't in the big venue because I mean, let's be honest, it was not a big turnout the first year. Um, and we were not big enough for the venue that we had and we had to move to a smaller venue just so that we didn't go under. 
because that's just smart money right there. Like you don't want to, you don't want to overexert yourself and then you're dead in the water in a few years because you have no money because you spent more money than you had trying to keep a venue that you can't even fill. So it was smart. We moved to another um, hotel, a smaller one. And, um, then we, um, overbooked that hotel. Basically it was huge. Cause now we went from having all this wide open space to just like a normal sized hotel. Uh, and the second year was just as good as the first year. Um, I mean, at a working standard, you kind of have blinders on when you're working these things sometimes, like sometimes you can really see that something is not going well, but you know, when you're younger and things are going well in your eyes, like nothing else is going on in the background. You don't see the other stuff that's kind of going on. Um, which, you know, you read the reviews later on, you're like, oh yeah, like it, I'll get to that in a second. I'm pushing ahead. I'm just trying to get my thoughts together. <laughs> um, but anyways, you know, like there was a, a dance that year um, and I was involved in the formal dance because the Tomkey character kind of followed me for a while um, at this convention scene in particular. Uh, but we did a whole hour on high school dance and I got to help with some judging and, you know, just, I was, it was really involved and it was nice. And they hosted the masquerade and the masquerade went swimmingly well. And one of my favorite <laughs> moments kind of came out of it where, uh, people rushed the stage and this picture of me just in pure horror going, what is happening right now? Um, but that's when we decided I needed more of a security detail because people seem to really like me. And, uh, you know, I was like, okay, I, but you can't be running up on stage. <laughs> And, and, you know, attacking, well, attacking is a big word, but not like attacking, but you know what I mean? Like you can't just be rushing up on stage and like screaming at people and running off stage. Like, don't do that. Don't do that ever to anybody. Um, so yeah, first year, second year, great, good turnout, good times. Um, and I don't really know when it started going south, like the particular year per se. Um, I took a few, my friends would come to come to the convention and they had a, a okay ish time. Um, but I think they didn't really say anything to me for a while about like things that were going on because they knew it was important to me. Um, and I, I respect that and it's very nice of them. And I do have some of the best friends in the world that, you know, just want to be a supportive of me and, they like what I do at these conventions, but they don't particularly like what other people do sometimes at these conventions. So I get why they didn't really say anything to me at first because, you know, you don't want to hurt my feelings. And again, I love you all. So thank you for, you know, supporting me <laughs> through all of it. <laughs> um, but at one point in one of the years, all of a sudden I show up to the convention and I'm going to the meetings and the meetings aren't as smooth as they could be, or they don't really start on time ever because we're not on our time. We're on like so-and-so's time or this person's time. And I mean, I was working a full-time job then too. So me sitting around not getting any information out there or any meeting really happening when I have to get back to my job, it's frustrating. You know, it's like, well, we're all here now and we're all waiting so we can get this like meeting done and you know, there was some disorganization behind the scenes, but again, at the time I didn't feel like I was important enough or like high up there enough that it really affected me. These things were happening like this. So it's like, okay, well, I don't know what any of you guys are going to talk about. I just need to mention this thing about masquerade and I got to get going. So that's how a lot of those meetings went. And eventually I just got to a point that I knew that's how those meetings were going to be run. And I kind of stopped going because it's like, well, what am I doing? I'm only the host of the masquerade because now at this point, like I said, a few years in, all of a sudden I wasn't on masquerade staff anymore. Like our masquerade staff had expanded a bit and we had a few more people that got involved with it, um, with my friends. And I showed up one year to find out like, oh no, no, you're not helping judge. Like we have judges. And it's like, oh, I didn't, I didn't know we had gotten judges. So I guess I got booted out of that. Okay. And then it basically turned into all I had to do was host. I did the opening ceremonies, I hosted the masquerade, and I did the closing ceremonies. And that's that was my entire job at this convention. So, I mean, you're there for four days, and you do the very first event, well, first-ish event 
of the con. You do an event on Saturday night and then you don't do anything until Sunday night. And that didn't seem right to me. Like it was very boring. It was a very sad, boring thing, but I felt like that I needed to be there because I loved the doing the few things that I did do. So I would go and host my events and then nothing to do in between because I'd been ousted from the masquerade crew. And and that's the only way I can describe it. Like I had no job. I had nothing to do. Um, And I mean, there were other events being held through the weekend, but a lot of that staff like either hosted their own event or they had somebody that was a friend of theirs that was hosting their event. So there was a few years where it's like, I didn't, get to really see anybody because like me and my friends weren't coming like right to the con and I would be wandering around just find something to do I did a lot of dealer's room I did a lot of artist alley like just waiting for either someone to text me and tell me oh hey maybe you could come help with this event and it it, it sucked <laughs> but I mean again I stuck with it because I'm like well you know the masquerade is my big thing and that's what I want to do and I don't want to lose that and me not doing it anymore like who's going to do my event so I stuck it out for that couple years and then finally eventually um, one of the staff members was like oh hey I have this event um, but I need a host for it and it's like a three hour event and I'm like cool is that going to affect the whole one thing that I do at the con and it, it didn't so It turned into my Saturdays were all the hosting. (laughs) And I mean, that was fun. That was fun. Like I got to do that big event and then I did um, the masquerade on Saturday. So at least it gave me something to do in between. And then those people also had another event of like the same caliber they did kind of like an after hours thing. So I got to host that as well. Um, So literally from basically noontime until one in the morning on Saturdays, all I was was hosting. And again, we started this whole thing where that's what I wanted to do. That's what the thing I wanted to do. And it it kept me busy and occupied. Um, But in the meantime of that, we had also switched hotels again. Um, We did like, we were at one hotel for a very long time and then we moved back to the original hotel. So I did those events into that. Um, It's a lot more venue to wander to. But then I'm finding out in the meantime from my friends who are finally kind of opening up to me, like, you know, they're asking me like, well, why are you just there for like the one day of work? Like if they're not utilizing you to do other things, like there's really nothing else for you to do. And I was like, no, but again, I just want to host and I want to, I want to be with people and I've got people that expect to see me there and not just like people that work there, like people that come to the convention. Like I had this um, one gentleman with his daughters and he would come to the masquerade and he would find me after every single masquerade and just be like, so glad to see you always like, you know, make me and my daughters and everybody so happy and excited for this event. Um, And I have not seen them since I left this convention and it breaks my heart because I mean, his kids, like I watched them grow up. I know the last time I saw them, one of them was either just about to finish college or was like midway through college and the other one was graduating. And it's just, you know, you lose those connections when you leave things. And it's just, I think about that a lot, especially work working at Boston now. It's like, I have connections with people and audience members and things, but I don't have connections like the small town, like convention, like, and then those are things I miss, um, quite a bit. So, you know, like I just kind of like shoo shooed my friends off, like, no, it's not that bad. And they'd be like, well, this, you know, one of my friends in particular was talking about a, a situation with a guest being left alone. That wasn't a guest that should have been left alone. And she ended up kind of getting them back to a handler of some kind. And, you know, you hear things like that. You're like, well, who knows guests kind of wander sometimes like maybe that was the situation in this case or I don't know but you know it's like things that are kind of rattling that start coming out of the woodworks um just about how people you know being treated or situations being handled and 
I mean, working in customer service too, you kind of have to take things with a grain of salt at the beginning. Like, okay, well, it's like a one incident, like, you know, things happen. Who knows what the other side of the story is? And you have to think like that. But at the same time, you don't have to think like that because then you're just kind of making excuses for things um, and trying to not admit how bad they can be or could be. Uh, in the midst of me finally finding something to do besides the like two or three events that I was hosting, um, I also took up um, Artist Alley. And that was an opportunity for my sister to finally come in and go to conventions for the first time, but also help because now I found myself, especially on Saturdays, being busy as hell. Because <laughs> I was like, oh, I finally have something to do. Um, and we uh, ran an artist alley table for a few years um, at this convention where I sold um, comic book uh, cases and like basically I take like phone cases and I would make them out of comic book pages and I would cover them and I would cover different like laptop things and iPad cases and it was really lucrative. People really like enjoyed it a lot. Um, but I needed someone to be at my table because finally I had something to do. Like Friday I could be there all day because I did one event and then I came back and I was there all day. Saturday, nowhere to be found for the whole 12 hours that um, Artist Alley was open. And then again on Sunday I was there basically all day for a breakdown and yeah, like yeah, I had to find something to do. Like I worked at a convention and I had to find things for myself to do as the years went on because I didn't have enough to do. And just talking to people at con being like, well, what else can I do? Like no one knows what needs to be done. Like no one, you know, you text people and say, hey, is there like, you know, anything I can do? Is there anything I can help with? Like, and it gets tiring after years when you just don't get responses for hours on end because everybody's busy, but also they don't really know what's going on or you get a message from somebody at the last minute and you're in the middle of something else it's like well how am I supposed to help with that <laughs> if I just found out about it like two minutes before I have to be here there and everywhere I mean at some points I would be asked like during the con if someone saw me hey can you be here at this time be like oh yeah sure but I mean usually these things get scheduled out at meetings that are disorganized, but it's like, I stopped going to these meetings because there was no point of me being there because I didn't feel like there was a point of me being there. So it just the backgrounding of it, just messy. And then I just didn't find a point because I wasn't really running a division or anything. So, I mean, usually those meetings end up being for people that are in charge of, you know, the bigger events or the bigger hearsay, whatever, I just didn't go anymore. It was There was no point in me going because I didn't feel like I was important enough to go to these things. And I didn't need to know these things. And I would still show up at the convention and I would still know everything because nothing really changed. <laughs> it was always the same. Like, nothing changed. And then, you know, like, over the years, like, I went and worked for other conventions as well. Um, and I think that's kind of when some animosity came up and again I'm, I'm saying this is all my opinion this is how I felt this is how things played out in my eyes um, I'm sure other people that were involved in these things are going to have another opinion like they're going to say that's not how the situation happened but it wasn't just me seeing it it's like my friends saw it too so we can't really deny that it happened um, in particular I was working at a convention um and I had a lot more to do with this one. I was helping with all their masquerade stuff. I was helping with the judging. I was doing basically everything that I did um, at this first convention that I worked for. But I got to continue to do it at this new convention. And I really enjoyed it while it lasted down there, um, which again had its own slew of problems as to why we all ended up leaving it. But the time that I was there and it was a good chunk of time because I was still working at the other convention as well. It just felt like I had betrayed them in a way. Like I would go and I would visit the table to be like, hi, like, you know, how's your weekend going? And did you come see the masquerade last night? And I would be told that, no, we didn't go and watch it because no, it's too long or, you know, it feels like you guys are doing too much. It's taking away from the events that are on stage. 
Like, no, we didn't go to this dating game. No, we didn't go to this masquerade. Like, yeah, we went for a few minutes, but it wasn't that great. And so we left and these same people would go to the masquerade that I ran at theirs, which was nowhere near the same capacity of things that I could do on stage. Cause I mean, we'd have the people that would get together and actually be at the meeting and want me to be involved and talk to me. And we plan stuff so that we have stuff to do on stage. So I wasn't just standing up there with the piece of paper at the last minute that I got telling me like, okay, well, good luck. Here's the names. You know, we actually had a plan for stage for that. So we keep the crowd going. And I had to fly by the seat of my ass at this one because I would barely get like a lineup that was correct until the very last minute. And they would sit through that masquerade and be like, Oh my God, it was amazing. It's like, no, it wasn't. It was stressful. And it was like, literally, thank God I can think on my feet, you know? And it was just so frustrating to me that I put so much time and I could do that same thing for them and they just wanted nothing to do with it. They just wanted me to show up and dance like a monkey on stage and then like go back to what I was, you know, being wherever the hell I was because I had nothing else to do. And so, you know, I just, I let it go. Cause I'm like, whatever, if you guys are going to be like that, like, I'll just go, I'll do your thing. And I'm here and I'm doing this thing. And it's like, I'm trying to be supportive of everybody. Cause I want to help everybody. But it just felt like, you know, I was, <laughs> not like the enemy. Like I did, that's not the word I'm looking for. Like it just felt like I had betrayed them in some way going to work at this other convention with my friends. And it got to a point where I just stopped asking if they came. And then one of the final years I worked at the other convention, there was something that happened with a masquerade sign up of another staff member from the first convention. And I'm, I tried my best to help with it as I could because I wasn't in charge of the registration part of our department. I was just in charge of um, making sure like, you know, judging and hosting and checking in and all that. And I did my best to make sure that, you know, their paperwork was all set and something ended up not being all set. And I can't remember if it was like them filling it out. I think it ended up being a, they filled it out wrong situation um, that I didn't find out about because I had passed the right person over to them to talk to until we were at the convention. There was just something happened and I finished the weekend. I was out to eat with my friends after a long convention weekend. And I came back to this posts on line, like right on Facebook about how awful the experience was. And it took it very personal um, because one, these are also my friends, but two, the weekend was not awful. Like it might've been awful for them because of some foul ups that happened, you know, on that were their fault. Like as far as like filling out paperwork and then just watching all of these people that I worked with for so many years at the first convention, just going off on like how bad the convention that I was working for now was when they didn't even go, like they weren't even there that year. Like they might've gone in the past or whatever. Um, but like just railing down on things that I worked really hard on and I actually was able to be a part of and felt like I was a part of and it hurt my feelings. Like I was really hurt because I'm like, I thought these people were my friends too. And now here they are trashing something when they know that I can publicly see it and they know that it's about something that I was involved in, like a sp specific event. And I ended up leaving the first convention like the, I, I was leaving the year before anyways, cause I finally listened to my friends a little bit and they're like, look, if this is all you're going to be doing. Like, are you really happy? And I thought about it and I was like, no, I don't think I am. Like, maybe this is the opportunity for me to step back. I had gotten a new co-host, um, and they were doing a wonderful job. And I was like, I felt like I could pass the buck on to somebody else. Basically. It's like, you know what, this, here is the mantle. Here is like the scepter. Like you are the new this and there we are. And it just felt like a good way to be able to exit out of it. And it happened right before I was going to do this last convention. So, I mean, I don't know if that had something to do with it as well, but the long story short is I got very upset 
online because you know back in the day it's what you did you got very upset online people do it now too but like <laughs> i personally used to get upset online and then it turned into like this other fight i defriended quite a few people from the convention um over it because i was just done with people running their mouths about things that um i had put a lot of effort into like i just felt very betrayed and very hurt and i was over it and that was supposed to be the end of it. Like I was never going back to the convention, either one of the conventions now, because something else had happened for that other convention, which I believe Ryan and I have discussed before. Um, but I wasn't going back to the first convention and that was it. My convention career was over. I would go to conventions for fun now and I wasn't working them anymore. And I had accepted that life. Like I was done. I had stepped back. I didn't have to talk to any of these people anymore. I didn't want to talk to them, especially after what had happened. And so, um, we got closer to the time of year that first convention was going to be coming up and I had been getting, um, messages from friends that I worked with like kind of worked with like people that just went to the convention going, Oh, are we going to see you this weekend at all? And of course I'm like, no, you're not going to see me this weekend. I'm not going I'm like, I'm not working. I don't work there anymore. I'm not going up there. And they were sad. And <sighs> I don't know if it's kind of like Stockholm syndrome <laughs> or what it was. I think it was just a series of events that reminded me too much of the good things that happened. And I said, all right, I'm going to go for a couple of hours. One, because I knew I could sneak into the convention and get around without a badge on because security was very interesting in that place. Let me just say, like I could, I used to make a game of how long I could walk around that convention and not have my badge for the weekend before somebody finally was like, Katie, go get your badge. <laughs> and one time I made it to a Sunday. My point is I, I walked right in to like the back entrances of this place for a couple hours, told my friends where I was going to be meeting up and I got about two hours into it before I was spotted by the head of the convention and basically pulled upstairs into the green room into a meeting with, you know, all the heads of the convention to talk about what had happened and how sorry they were and how they like heard like why I was upset and that things were never meant to be like that. And you know, back, back in the day again, and, and this is still several years ago now, back in the day, it's like people that you're friends with and they apologize to you like that. And you think like, okay, they really mean it. Like, they're really sorry. It's not going to happen again. It's, <laughs> and I'm laughing about it because, you know, saying it out loud, thinking about it, it's like, no, it, it did happen again. <laughs> it's not funny. It's not funny. But like at the time, you know, again, it's like kind of an abusive relationship. You're just like, no, it's going to change. Things are going to change. It's going to be different this time. And like the sucker I am, I'm like, fine, I will come back for next year because it was like the 10th anniversary or something. And it meant a lot to them. And I had always promised, like, even when I left the first time and there wasn't this weird, like tension between everybody is like, I was going to come back and do a hosting gig for the 10th year. And I ended up staying with friends that night to stay overnight. And I was asked if I was going to go see the masquerade and I was like, well, yeah, I'm going to go see Masquerade and I'll go say hi to all the people that work it. And I did. And they actually um, needed a person to run the cameras backstage for the big projection screens. And I had offered, I'm like, well, you know, I know what I'm doing because I've done stage stuff and I'll go do it. And of course I go backstage at the Masquerade and there's people that work the Masquerade that were not a big fan of me because of all of the online drama. And... I was just keeping to myself and um, my friend who was my security person, like we got talking and comes up to me and goes, hi. So I was told that I'm not supposed to allow you on stage. 
And I was very confused at first. So I was just like, wait, what? And he's like, well, no, I was told, like, I'm not supposed to let you up on the stage at all tonight. Like, I'm, you're not supposed to go on stage to do anything. And I'm looking at him like, I'm sitting back here and I'm working the cameras. I have no intention of going on stage. And, you know, then the rest of the night I'm thinking about like, how do I sneak up there? But like, I didn't want to ruin it for the people whose event it was. I didn't want to ruin it for the, um, you know, new host that I had passed the torch on over to by any means. I didn't want to like ruin their night or anything. And I didn't do anything. All I did was run the cameras and watch this wonderful masquerade. And I say that sarcastically unfold. <laughs> it was, it was a very interesting, um, he did a great job. The host did a great job. Let's just leave it at that. There was a moment of um, questionable things, but it's just like knowing that people were behind me and just so upset with me still because I had voiced, an, you know, we had our different opinions about how the other event had gone. It's like, and now you're going to be upset because I'm sitting here like after I've already had this talk with the person who's in charge of everything. And it was just... You know, I should have just gone back upstairs and be like, yeah, you know what? No, I'm good. I don't want to like deal with this anymore. And I didn't. And instead I just sat there and smiled and ran a camera and plotted ways to streak across the stage. <laughs> I didn't, I did not. No one needs to see that whether I'm upset or not. No one needs to see me streaking. So there you go. Um, so then we get back into the next year and I show up and there's still like this weird tension um, but I host and um, I ran some panels. Um, I think I was a guest that year too because people were mad about me coming back. So I was staff, but I was also like a cosplay guest of honor. It was <laughs> just to get around people's attitudes. I'm like, oh my God, this is, this is dumb. But then the following year after all that was taken care of, I, um, I came back again. I was asked to host because the host that I had left was no longer going to be hosting. So I had to come back and host again. So they kind of had to get over it and let me host. But like, if I thought it was bad before with the, I'm not involved in the masquerade thing. Like I really felt very unwelcome by the masquerade people in general after that. Um, like they had their click and I wasn't a part of it. And I was like, okay, if that's how it's got to be, then I will just show up and hold a microphone and we go back to the way things were. And it was exactly back to the way things were. Um, I got a paper at the last minute. I hope that I had everybody's name right and the order correct. And I would go up and I would host and I would leave. And you would like ask yourself now, like, well, if it went back to the way things were, then like, why did you stick with it? Well, I mean, I had other things going on because in that time as well, when I came back, it was a, well, you do need something more to do. So why don't you do um, guest relations? So I was on guest relations for a couple of years because now we're just trying to find a place for Katie um, because part of my um, rant when we were talking to figure out if I was coming back or not was I need something more to do. I don't want to just be wandering around this convention. Um, there had been talks with the person in charge too about, you know, the future of the convention and like who's going to take over someday because some people just don't have an interest in taking it over. And I was made aware that I was a possibility of somebody that could possibly potentially uh, be the person in charge someday. So having that in mind, like, why wouldn't you tough it out? Because then you have in your mindset, like someday I could be the person making the calls. I could be the person in charge of, you know, all of it. Um, and I mean, now, like maybe that wasn't that person's intention to make me think like that, but that was very much the conversation that I felt like we had, um, right at my own restaurant, <laughs> like came down to talk to me about it. So, I mean, it, it was, it's in there. Like I could have been in charge of this convention at some point in my life. Like, I don't know what the timeline was at all, but like at some, like, so why wouldn't you stick it out? Like, Hey, you know, maybe someday like this could be mine. Like, yeah, I will be here and I will be present and I will do everything I can. And in that, like learn how to do 
all of these other things as well. So like try different departments and stuff because you want to know how it all works. So someday if you're in charge, you can make sure it all works the same that it's going or better if it needs improvement. So I worked on guest relations and it was hell. <laughs> it was so bad. And not because of the guests. I only got to watch two guests in the time that I was on guest relations. Um, because the first one, um, being Greg, um, he came back after so many years to be on and I was asked to be his liaison because we were friends, um, outside of the convention cause we stayed in touch, um, through Christmas cards and Facebook. And we had a great experience me watching him, but the person that was in charge of guest relations sucks. <laughs> and I said it. And that's my opinion. And I'm allowed to have it. Not organized. Very stressed out. Didn't like anything I did. Nothing I did felt right. Nothing. Like, I... They wanted to keep a professionalism. But the problem is, is I'm doing two jobs. I'm in charge of a masquerade, like, hosting it. And I'm in charge of this guest, who I had told at the beginning of the weekend, like, hi. Like, I'm probably going to be in costume because there's other things that I have to host. Um, and I have a persona that I have to, you know, upkeep, which everybody seemed to be aware of and respect, except for the guy in charge, never liked that I was in costume, but I wasn't wearing like wild, wacky, like weird costumes. Like I was Vegeta. So what did I have a wig and a t-shirt on, or I was Alexander Hamilton or something. And it's like, okay, I'm dressed up like Alexander Hamilton. Like that's a very nice, if you ask me costume. Like nothing that I wore was weird or out there. It was still in the realm of like something a like professional kind of would wear like outfit wise. I always kept that costume like in that wheelhouse. And, you know, the first year, nothing was really said to me about it and everything was okay. Um, but like, you know, people, he wouldn't be around because he'd be stressed out somewhere like freaking out about like something or just being a curmudgeon of some kind. So then people are asking me and I've only been on this staff for like five minutes and I'm helping to organize the line and figuring stuff out. And with the other people on the staff who have also been doing this for a few years with him. So it's like basically like the staff took care of it while he was somewhere freaking out or just being a grump or whatever. And it's like, okay, great. This is great. But I'll never forget working with that second guest and you know, it's just, I want to remember the whole conversation. I don't really remember the conversation because we were just standing there getting ready for like the day. And he made some comment about my professionalism. That's what I'm going to leave it at. Like that's, that's basically like he made a, a comment about my professionalism and the guest that I was watching basically told him off. <laughs> He's like, I don't have a problem with how she's dressed and like nothing's been going wrong this weekend. Like everything's been great. So I don't know what you're talking about. And it's just how embarrassing is that? You know, it's like, are you kidding me right now? Like, like the person that I'm watching has to like defend me to this person that I've worked with for like, maybe not in as close of a capacity, but like I've worked with for a million years and it's like, okay, thank you for making me sound like some asshole. I appreciate that, you know? So it's just, I'll never forget it. And it's like, it hit, it stung. And it's just, I wanted to get through the rest of the weekend and just have a good weekend with my guest. And things started to get messier after that, that year we were no longer at the hotel we were at, which was the big hotel that we've been at now for several years. Um, the long story short, the, too much damage was done to the hotel by the convention attendees because it was a younger crowd of people um, and too many things were happening and the hotel was swapping um who owned it. Um, it went from being, I think a Radisson to a Hilton or something, but the people that were coming in were not impressed with how, um, the building was being treated by the people that were staying at the hotel. Uh, and I can't say I blame them, especially there was, you know, 
a piano got broken, which I mean, we don't know if it was our convention or the soccer people that were there the weekend before. And like, it just so happened somebody in our convention found it. Um, people drawing on the walls, like sheets getting ruined because people are dyeing their hair in the hotel room, which I mean, all this stuff too could also happen on anybody's wedding. Like people are, you know, rambunctious. Like some of the stuff that's happening in the hotel rooms, like it can't just be like our convention people. This can't be the first time you've ever had blue hair dye on a pillowcase. Like let's talk, but you know, it all happens at the same time with the same group of people over multiple years, not just like a one year incident. Yeah. I can see why the hotel would be like, I'm sorry, you're not welcome back. And of course now the hotel, like they own half the convention center. So it's like, so then we can't have the convention center. So then we have to go find a new venue. <sighs> and it's just, you know, it's, it's messy. It's a new venue, which means we have to downgrade everything. You have to ground grade your staff. So unfortunately for that final year that I was at the convention, I went back to that old way of life where I didn't have anything to do. <laughs> Thankfully now I'd be rooming with my friends and everything instead of convention staff, like my, my friends would be there and like I could hang out with them on the regular basis and Oh, it was such a bad year. It was so bad. Like no room in the hotel at all. I literally did two seconds at opening ceremony just to get through it. Unfortunately, one of our um, friends had passed away on staff and I had to make that announcement. Sadly, it was bad. And then the masquerade wasn't even really a masquerade. <sighs> which I didn't really find out about until someone all of a sudden was like, Oh yeah, you know, like the stage isn't big enough to do skits or anything. So basically people are just going to walk on stage and walk off. Like that's, that's like a 10 minute thing. That's not a masquerade. That's a walk on session. You could do that in a panel room. You don't need a main events for that. And it's not and like, now I'm like freaking out. Cause like the only thing that I get to do at the convention isn't even going to really happen. So it's like, so what was the point of me even coming this weekend? If you know, I have nothing to do. Ugh, so I ended up turning it into like this Q and a thing and it lasted a whole half hour because no one had even really signed up because now they can't do skits. So why would anybody sign up for a masquerade if they can't even really do anything and you can't blame them. And the whole year was a mess. And I guess we could blame it on being shuffled around at the last minute to get a different venue. But honestly, you can't because it just seemed to be the quality of things and how things were going. And it's just making excuses for them. And there's no like excuse for that. Like, sorry, there's no excuse for that. And the, the core basis of all of this is just it comes down to like organization and there was none. And it's slowly becoming very apparent to me that it was, it was kind of a shit show the whole time. And I just didn't want to see it. And I didn't want to recognize that because I wanted it to work so bad. And I wanted to have this because I felt like this was my last, this is my last chance at like hosting anything because I didn't have any real ins anywhere else to do this. I didn't have, you know, like the friends working at a million different places that I could just walk in and be like, Hey, I've got all this experience and I'm pretty funny. And I didn't have that anywhere else. And I didn't want to lose that. And I didn't want to have to like go work at other conventions and start at the complete bottom again, because I knew what that was like too. And I just, I was hanging on to something because I just needed it in my life at that time. And it, it's not, healthy and it wasn't right. And looking back on it, it's like I held on way longer than I ever should have. Like as soon as I left that first time, that should have just been the end of it. And I should have been done and I would have been a happier, better person for it. And, you know, you see things now that last year that I was there, like it was kind of the eye opener where I'm like, well, I don't even know if I'm coming back next year because if things can't get any better than this and you know what? I can't be on the sinking ship is basically what my mindset. And then it was a sinking ship. Um, it was 
bad. Like I didn't, I didn't step down immediately right after I left that time. It was the year after, and it was about a month before. Um, and I had just been asked by my friends to do Boston and I for, you know, I, I worked at Boston as a judge for a million years and my friend was like, well, you know, I need a new co-host for the following year. And I was like, oh yeah, it could be me. And it was kind of a joke at first. And then I applied and I got it. And so I started working for Boston and I was like, oh my gosh, I have another opportunity. So in the back of my mind, I'm just like, you know, we'll do one more year at the other convention just because like things might be different because now we're not as shuffled, even though it shuffled to yet another venue because the other venue didn't work out at all. And I, I just, I remember waking up and I had like six messages on my phone from people like my friends going, have you seen the website? Have you seen what's going on? Have you seen this? And I was confused at first because one, you're just waking up in the morning and you're like, what is going on? And then people with actual concerns that I've been working with or my friends are just like, have you seen this whole panel thing? And basically right on the front page of this family friendly convention, like that's how they promote themselves. It's like family friendly convention was this panel for this 18 plus photo shoot. And there's basically you're reading through it going, okay, wait, what's happening here? It's like, you get to go into a panel room and you're getting your picture taken and they're not safe for work, like photos, like says 18 plus. So it's like, you get, and then you have to sign like an NDA. So like, yeah, you're in the room, but once you're in there, if someone takes your pictures, like basically that's on you. And it, it sounded like a nightmare. It was, it sounded like it, it was a nightmare. So, of course, me working for this convention as long as I did, I expressed my concerns immediately, thinking, okay, this has to be a joke. Like, someone must have put it up. Someone hacked in. Like, this can't be real. Like, this isn't going to be a thing that we do because that sounds atrocious. Like, that is the worst idea ever. Those aren't things you just hold in panel rooms. Like, those are things that you do with photographers in the safety of your own hotel room and not the chance that someone's going to just snap some random picture of you and use it all over the internet and you know people have like fake IDs and people like sneak into these things all the time and then what happens when someone's parent finds out and then you have legal issues on your hand like these aren't concerns that concerned any of them because when I expressed my concerns about it I was basically told that I had nothing to be concerned about and that I had no faith in them whatsoever and it's like no you're right I don't have any faith in you I don't I don't have any whatsoever because like this is the stupidest thing like I just saw like so many issues coming out of it. And obviously I wasn't the only one because there were other staff members that were also concerned about it. And there were people like messaging me all day going like, what is this? Like, this can't be a thing that happens. Like, this is so bad. Like the sheer logistics of it were just really bad. And I finally just had to make this decision to be like, this is it. Like, if I ever needed a nail in the coffin, like, this is the whole set of nails. Like, boom, 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 right in. Like, see you later. And that's when I officially left. And I have not looked back since. Like, I don't really talk to anybody that works there anymore. Like, there's a random few people that I am still friends with. Um, and, yeah. <laughs> I just... You know, sometimes it, it takes something like that for you to really open your eyes and just be like, what have I been doing? Because that was like basically the mindset of the entire time I worked there. And it was like the wake up call that I needed. It was like, oh my gosh, like this isn't a first time incident. Like if it had been like a first time incident, something like that happens. No, of course you're going to give people a second chance, but it's like chance after chance after chance. And I couldn't do it anymore. I'm like, it wasn't one staff member's fault. It was inevitably like the person in charge. And even now, like looking back on it, and this was several years ago now, like looking back on it and being, you know, encountering people after the pandemic, talking to me about, you know, working there, people that don't work there anymore. We've talked, um, people that do work there, we've talked and finding out that 
the whole reason that I did leave was never fully expressed to them. Um, it was kind of lied to about. <laughs> it's kind of it's laughable to me. Like you can't even tell people why I left. Like it's just lies. And if you would like to live in that lie, so be it. But I'm saying right here, right now, the reason I left was poor management, poor communication. And honestly, like the whole event's a disaster. And it's just waiting to implode on itself. It's like people go and it's a younger crowd and they enjoy themselves and going to this convention and not seeing the behind the scenes and how patched together it is, you know, have at it, go have a great time. Like just don't get involved. And again, I'm not going to mention what the name of it is. And if you figured it out by now, good for you. Um, but that is my opinion. That is how I feel about it. Um, and I will never be going back and they only have themselves to thank for that. So it's not one person. It was a few people and the people that I do know and I do love and I do respect, like they know who they are and yeah, I know this seems a little vague of an episode. Um, it might be a little bit all over the place. I did the best that I could trying to keep it on track. But I guess the moral of the whole story is just don't let yourself be dragged along. Don't settle. Don't say things are okay and they're not okay and it's a very not okay situation. Um, don't sell yourself short, I guess. And don't make yourself miserable just because you know, you want to be there for other people. Like sometimes you have to think about being there for yourself. And I wish I had done that sooner than I did. Um, I'm glad that i made the choice that I did. I'm very happy in the situation that I am now. Um, and you know, if it ends up being that Boston is the last show that I end up hosting at, like not that I'm done with Boston by any means. Um, but if it does end up being the last show I host at, I think I'll be okay with that. Like I don't need to chase the dream of hosting all the time, um, anymore, but I really have a good time again at it. And, um, I'm happy with the situation that I'm in now. And yeah, this is a really long ranty episode, a lot longer than I expected it to be. So not bad, Katie <laughs> talking for a full hour by yourself. Um, yeah, not, <laughs> not the most riveting episode, I guess, but I'm glad that it's off my chest and I'm glad that I finally told the story. Um, and this will be the only time that I tell the story. Uh, so hopefully this is good enough for everybody. Um, and hopefully I don't go and get sued over my opinion on things. Um, I shouldn't, but just in case, <laughs> yeah. So guys, that's it for this week's episode. Um, if you have a horror story or any kind of story at all that you'd like to share yourself, you know, you can always drop us a line and come on the show. If you'd like to hear more stories like this, you can always pick up a copy of my book that could have gone worse. Life lessons from a dinosaur cosplayer. Um, this particular story just happens to be in that book as well. Um, hopefully a more put together version than the one that I've tried to spew out today. <laughs> But again, it was just, there's a lot of thought process and that's honestly not even all the details of it. Um, if you want to believe that or not, um, can't really get into like the specifics details, unfortunately, but I feel like the generalization gives you quite the idea and uh, yeah, really love to hear other people on the show. would love to hear all of, uh, your stories as well. And I hope you guys are having a great October so far. I know I am love the spoopy season and yeah, uh, love you guys. Thanks for tuning in and I will catch you all next week. Bye.